So instead of drawing on a piece of paper today, I thought it'd be fun to draw on a piece of wood. And to do that, I'm going to be using these markers. These are used by a lot of tag artists. So I thought it'd be fun to try and draw in a graffiti style. I'm not sure if you can mix them with like Posca pens, but I have these nearby. So yeah, let's uh, see what happens. I think the first step Gucci scooches is to decide what I want. I know graffiti artists are kind of about being spontaneous for the most part, but I'm a little too nervous. So I just want to sketch something out first. I was actually looking into different styles of graffiti. There's one graffiti style called the hollow style, which is big round hollow letters where you just outline them. And it reminded me of bubbles, which reminded me of blubfish. So I thought it'd be fun to center like some graffiti around a blubfish. And I have to fit it inside the square canvas that I have. Let me just start by, uh, I don't know, some of this. I've been looking a lot into graffiti and different styles, like I know the difference between a tag and a hollow, but obviously I'm very new to this whole thing. So I'm gonna end up putting my own spin coming on it from a bit more of an illustrative point of view. Now right off the bat, just writing the letters, I see like I can take this as a circle and maybe turn that in to an actual blubfish. I don't know if I should take every circle or if that might be a little overboard. Yeah, because there's two B's and I feel like that ends up making it too even on each side, which isn't very appealing to me. I'm gonna start throwing in some colors. Oh, you know what I did wrong? I think this style usually all the letters are more connected. There aren't these kind of spaces in between it, just from what I've seen so far. So like this is what an H would look like, more like that. Oh, something I just noticed is I kind of have a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters, which might be a no-no. <laughs> just kind of experimenting, throwing some colors here and there. I'm just using the uh, Posca pens right now because I am drawing some small blowfish just makes me smile. Maybe add some bubbles. Now I do want mine to be kind of legible, so I'll probably have to be a little easy on the random bubbles. Now, just looking at this from a distance, one thing I definitely got right that I wanted was legible words, but I also want our little blubfish here to be pretty pronounced and right now he isn't showing through. So I can either try using a different color or when I draw it again, draw a bigger blubfish, obviously. <laughs> Not quite standing out as much as I need it to. See, my favorite thing is to definitely draw in a sketchbook because if it turns out bad, all you have to do is turn the page. <laughs> And I feel like there's just so much less pressure to make it look good. And so I can throw a color on here and not be worried. And that's definitely my favorite way of expressing myself. Sometimes I'm not happy with finished pieces. So the sketchbook is always where I come back to. I definitely want to try another one where the blubfish is more obvious. So if I make this lower half of the bee really big, I'm try to think of bubbles when I'm writing the letters. It would be like this maybe with his little fins sticking out maybe make the second b lower case round the letters a little more maybe use a bubble to create that l shape but does this look like a letter b is the other question bubbles to fill in some of these spaces there i think i did a better job making them look rounder do i like this better i definitely like a little blobfish being a lot bigger Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with this one. I think we improved from there, but I want to try another color scheme. These are the colors I have available in Crink. I'm kind of hoping when these dry, I'll be able to layer the Posca on top. These are alcohol-based, I believe. Opaque permanent alcohol-based paint. And then I could be wrong. They don't say on them anywhere, but I believe Posca is acrylic. I definitely want to use, I really like the look of this dark blue as an outline. So I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Something like this. I think it needs a bubble right here to kind of be like a period. Oh wait, thought I had an exclamation point there. Can we squeeze it in? Obviously it's not too late. These are opaque. Drawing on top of the crank. Oh, that does work pretty well. So as long as the wood texture is fine with Posca pens, it should be fine. Use this light blue and color just the lower half of the letters. I think this has much more water appearance than that one did. That one was a little dark. 
Oh yeah, I definitely like that better. Doesn't that feel more like refreshing compared to this one? Does this add to it or just distract from it though? That's always a good question to ask when you're adding random bits and bobs. Something like that. Now I have to wait for it to dry before I can do Mr. Blubfish there. But I'm just gonna practice one last thing. If I can find my pencil. Draw Blubfish the way I usually draw him and see if I can figure out what I don't quite like about that. So you usually can see his tail in some form. Try another angle. Definitely prefer the eyes looking in on each other. <laughs> this guy's cute. Leaving him white's not terrible because if I do leave him white, I'm actually gonna have to color him white because the surface we're gonna be drawing on is not white. I don't know, I think I'm gonna try making him yellow again. Maybe blending it out. Well, yellow's not gonna be that standouty, I don't think, on the wood. You could also make him just red. Let's just blend these together, see what happens. He looks like I smudged ketchup and mustard on him. The red's not bad, especially if I go in and kind of outline some things. I'm kind of incorporating that color throughout. I don't know. I don't love the red. Though. I think I like everything else, so I'm gonna go ahead and move to the wood, and then we'll rethink the color of the blobfish when we get there. <laughs> I'm gonna move the sketch out of the way, move our panel into position here. A true graffiti artist would probably draw straight with the paint marker immediately, <laughs> but that's not me. I'm gonna start with a white Posca because a lot of the background needs to be filled in white for the letters. And obviously you can paint over top of it anyway. So I think that'll be the opportune way here. So we know we want it all to fit inside this cube. I know the B is kind of here with the big... Ooh, see that's taking up too much space. Need to move it over a little. And then fish goes down here. And the exclamation point like it just a smidge lower. Oh, but we're gonna have all that detail at the bottom with the shading, so that's probably fine. We can even add some more bubbles if we need. I kind of want to add some bubbles that overlap the letters too. So maybe one here and Mr. Blubfish will go right here. And then we want that like one point perspective coming off everything. I'm going to move this white crink marker, which I've not used before. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all of the letters. Oh, I just noticed this L got squashed somehow. Where is this L? I just make sure I like, this isn't working as well as I was hoping. Okay, this blue one's working a lot better. Maybe I'm just not using this right. I'm going to add another coat maybe. So we can get a little better coverage. And I'll see you when that's done. All right, I did a couple more coats of the white crank. Now I'm gonna go over everything with this blue one. Just kind of outline all of the shapes. Be very soft and round with it. It's obviously never too late to fix mistakes with these pens. They're not quite as easy to work with as Posca pens for sure. They're in a very different ballpark. I'm kind of not waiting for things to dry only because I feel like if you were actually doing graffiti somewhere, do you have time to wait for all your layers to dry? That seems counterproductive. <laughs> oh, and something I saw someone do is you take your marker like this you squish it in and wait for something to drip like that. Oh, I got it on my desk. I'm sure there's a bit of a science and an art to where you place these. My next step would be to add that light blue layer. Oops, that's all over me. Just to add the light blue underneath bit. I'm gonna start doing that. And I might blend it with the white. I don't know if it's something you're supposed to do with these markers. I kind of want to try it. Just blend it so hopefully it won't be quite as harsh. It does dry fast to a certain extent, but instead of dry really fast, it kind of dries tacky. 
Now before I can do much more, I think I have to wait for it to dry and add some extra layers of things. And then I definitely want to use that dark blue Posca to outline everything. Oh, what I actually didn't do is add the paint water splashes. Blue is definitely more opaque than the white was. Try that squash technique. Ooh, watch that drip go. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I can see how you can go overboard with this. So yeah, I think I'm gonna let everything dry and then come back on top of that and start adding in some more details. Let's do that. All right, it's pretty dry. I wanna go and do this blue Posca, outline everything. That goes on so much smoother, but it might also be because the paint dried and it just wasn't sticking to the wood. I just want to outline the whole letter. Go. That already is starting to look a lot cleaner. Grab the white Posca. Clean up with some of these edges. Some like reflections to some of these bubbles. Kind of just ending up going back and doing everything again with the Posca. <laughs> Ooh, I can smudge it with my finger. A word I kept hearing when I was watching videos on by different graffiti artists who actually know what they're doing <laughs> is they kept saying, you want it to look spontaneous. So I'm kind of letting myself just do whatever I want at this point. I know I started with like a thumbnail and everything like I usually do, but now that I'm here on the actual board, I'm kind of just trying to, if I think of an idea, I just sort of throw it on there and see if it works. Because you can actually kind of fix a lot of things later because these art supplies are so opaque. They're adding some of that depth. And that shadow, thinking of it as a one point perspective. So it's gonna come in like this. I'm gonna add some more bubbles. I'm gonna try, what was that? Oh, I wanted to use this turquoise, this emerald green actually, and add a bit of a border on the right side. Let's try using some black. I'm actually going to redo that shadow I did in blue. Pop more. It was blending in too much with like the border of the words. That way I can actually use the black Posca and outline our little blubfish, which I think I want to go with the yellow dry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I prefer drawing on this with the Poscas. <laughs> they just seem to go on easier. Maybe we'll add a little reflection of yellow in some of the bubbles. Try that. Oh wait, that all needs to be, wait, 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 wait. This all needs to be white. The eyeballs, right? <laughs> he looks real freaky right now. We can go in and add some lines around him though. It's a little tricky because this tiny little point gets kind of caught in the wood texture and then shoots black ink everywhere. <laughs> Once I outline this thinly, I'm kind of hoping I can go over with something thicker. Yeah, because that's just kind of making a mess. That's working better than the skinny Posca, that's for sure. Not quite as cross-eyed as I'd like. Maybe when that dries and go over it with the yellow again and touch it up. All these edges. Maybe even add a blue shadow. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do something spontaneous and outline the entire outside with this yellow. Here we go. And you can't really see it. Might have to do another layer. <laughs> Not quite as opaque as I think I need it to be. So maybe now that I've laid this down, I can go over with the yellow Posca after it's dry. Or just go over the whole thing with blue again and try to erase it. But I should probably wait for it to dry so it's not green. Yeah, that looks very barfy. Okay, time to wait for it to dry again. <laughs> this is why I don't do spontaneous things. I'm gonna go ahead and put my signature in here somewhere. Boom, baby. Outline the bubbles again. 
a bit of a swap there, but uh, it happens. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I still want to like attempt or if it's time to walk away. Could have like shines to the eyeballs. Oh, that looks so much cuter. Excuse me. <laughs> Why was there green on? For some reason there's yellow on the end of this. Boop boo here and there. I think I don't know, I'm too scared to touch anything else. I think we've reached a point of no return. And I think these crank markers are starting to get to my head and my brain's starting to leak out my ears, even with all my windows open and the fan going. I hope you couldn't hear that the whole time. That would have been annoying. <laughs> Here's my first attempt at trying to make some kind of graffiti of some kind. <laughs> It didn't quite turn out the way I pictured. I much prefer this one right here. I think this is my favorite, but this is kind of cute for a first attempt. I think my preferred marker of these two would be the Posca pens. They're much more opaque when you first put them down. Whereas the crink, it seems like you need to do multiple layers before it blocks out the wood pattern behind it. I still have a couple more wood panels because this came in a multi-pack, so. Let me know what art supply you think I should use on another wood panel. There's so many ideas. Anyway, I do want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me experiment with a graffiti style. Obviously, I'm not part of the culture or the community that creates real graffiti. So I hope you can appreciate my small, tiny attempt. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week. And I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!